is KDLD Santa Monica and KDLE Newport Beach. L-I-O-C. This is Camp Freddy Radio. The following takes place between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. Billy Morrison, Dave Navarro, Matt Sorum, Donovan Leach, and Chris Cheney. Today is the longest day of my life. This is Camp Freddy Radio on the Independent FM in New Orleans. Yes, this is Donovan Leach from Camp Freddy. I'm the only member of Camp Freddy here tonight. Everyone else is away. Uh, I don't know, locked up, on vacation. I don't know where they are. But I have brought with me Vincent Gallo, the good American. Hello, Vincent. Hey, how you doing? Uh, don't get up, everybody. Yeah, please, stay in your seat. Stay, stay in your seat. Stay in your car. You know, I vowed that I would never be on this crap station again after they wronged me the last time. But, what uh, happened? Uh, there's something went down with you and uh, Jonesy? I did the uh, that Fat Guy Jonesy show. Yes. Said a few things. And uh, I asked for a tape of the show. And they gave me a tape of the show censored. They, they censored my own copy of the show. They censored it. As I yeah. send our, our guy off to make sure we're taping this show. Yeah. Okay. They censored it. Yeah, for you. Yes, yeah, they censored my copy, which uh, Why? I didn't get it. I don't know. Maybe they didn't want uh, proof out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's strange. Yeah. That's really weird. Jonesy. Did that, they censor what went out on the air? Did you, you remember when Jonesy's show was one, only one hour long, you know, where he, he could only talk so much, you know? Mm-hmm. He could only talk so much. Mm-hmm. He could only play so many songs. You know, he could only groan in his own uh, Jonesy for so long. The show was great then. Well, he's the you know he he's the he's the man behind the station. Yeah, he's he's uh, you know like Friends. He's what uh, what Friends was for NBC. Jonesy is for Indy. Jo- you know, Sex Pistols are sort of like uh, Johnny Rotten, Johnny Lydon's like uh, early band or something. You know. And then he got good with public image, and he got a good guitar player, Keith Levine, and the band suddenly is great. And then you look, you look back at the Pistols films and stuff, and it's uh, embarrassing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. You know, I mean, I, 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 you know, in case you guys don't know, Vincent Gallo is a man who's who speaks his mind, and he, you know, he's, and that's that's what I love about Vincent. We've been friends for a very long time, and and you know, he'll say exactly what's on his mind. He doesn't mince words. Me, I'm a mincer. <laughs> Me, I'm a fence rider. Me, I'm a Switzerland. Me, I'm the guy who just wants to make everyone happy. You're the guy when you call on the phone. I know you need something, a favor. Right, exactly. Yeah. But before I, I ask for the favor, I, I I usually have something, some nominal gift. For you. Yeah, and I gave up tonight. I was going to go to Outfest and see, you know, one of the great gay films at the Outfest. You know, Outfest is in town? The Gay Festival. Yeah, the Gay Festival. What was the film? Well, what what does it matter? It's a bestiality. They're all, they blend into one another. All the gay films blend in. They blend in. Um, You know, it's interesting. I I was just uh, uh, studying fetish. And uh, and Brazil is really the 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 epicenter of fetish nowadays. I don't did know you, if you know. Did you this. ever go to Brazil? I've never been to Brazil. Have okay. you? Yeah, really? I like it a lot. Yeah, I know our our friend Happy went down there and photographed the Brazilian prostitutes. Did he? I think he did more than just photograph. No, the, the 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 girls are nice there. Very nice. Mm-hmm. It's a nice place. Uh, Rio is nice. Yeah, and they. They, they, put, they, they put out. They put out. They put out. Big time. The yeah. fetish was un, unreal. They put out in in a way that I can't uh, describe. Yeah. You know, you do things that that couples do. Couples in love. Couples who've been in love a long, long time, and they're they're looking for anything. They're anything on, new. That's how they are on the, on the first date. They take it to the limit. They don't care. It could be scent, <laughs> scent related. You know, it just doesn't matter. That's uh, anyways. Uh, but they didn't make it to the final in the World Cup. No. Are you watching the World Cup? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow is is France and and yeah. Italy. Two countries filled with animals. My my <laughs> father and mother are from Italy. So yeah. So, so you can say that about Italy. I come from animals. Yeah. And France. Well, you're a good American, so you can. I can shit on France. That's right. <laughs> Poop. There, Poop, on France. Poop. Poop on we France. Poop on France. I think we got that one. Okay. okay good. We good. caught it. We caught that one. Poop on France. Poop on France. <laughs> 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 well, um, we got so, a couple of guests that we're going to call today. I think it's going to be a good show. Let's call Naomi now. We tried Naomi Campbell in Let's London. Let's get her on. 
Let's find out. We can try one more time. Let's get, let's find out things. I you wanna, know, if if anything, I ask we, her things. I got things to ask her. So what we'll, what we'll do is we'll play. Should we play the a lead off track? Yeah, let's, we'll, uh, this is a song by a great band, Alter Vox, when they had uh, the lead singer John Fox uh, still in the band. It's off their first album. It's called My Sex. That was free uh, with the great guitar player Paul Kossif. It was amazing. I'm sure you're a big fan, Donna. Listen, th- I was just listening to the last uh, 30, seconds, 30 seconds of that song, and, you know, just the, the free form, you know, the, the fact that it's not formulaic, that they're just feeling it. <laughs> and that's probably why the band's called Free. I think so, yeah. Um, thanks. And, and before that was Ultra Sex. Ultra Vox. Ultra Vox, my sex. <laughs> Ultra Sex, my Vox. And I love My Sex. It's such a great song. Um, Isn't it great that Jonesy knew somebody in public image? (laughs) (laughs) You know, recently, um, Vincent Gallo, the good American, there was an election just the other day in Mexico. And it it very much mirrored what what took place uh, here in the United States, where the conservative George Bush won by narrow margin. And the Democrats uh, said that there was uh, problems at the polls. <laughs> M- Mexico, a couple of days ago, had an election. The conservative guy won, and the Democratic guy saying problems at the polls. So I thought we could get our uh, political correspondent live from Mexico City, Mila Jovovich. Could you, could you imagine? Could you imagine the the, the scamming and the the sneaking and payoffs in Mexico? Can you just imagine? Well, listen, uh, I'm here live from Mexico City, and judging from the amount of alcohol that's being consumed, <laughs> there's definitely some scamming going on. That's for sure. And don't you love the physique of the Mexicans? The physique of a hardworking, underpaid, hard, hardworking guys out there with that physique of the hardworking Mexicans. Well, get this though. More, more importantly than than anything though, like here they've made it illegal to drink a week before the election. So you have literally <laughs> prohibition going on in Mexico a week before the election. So obviously no one gets drunk and like makes the wrong choice. Well, let me tell you, there's not one Corona from from uh, you know Cancun to Mexicali. Because it's been bought like two weeks before. You cannot find one beer. So people are getting arrested more at the time of elections for drunken behavior than any other time of the year. Which kind of proves that like prohibition doesn't work. It didn't work in the 20s. It doesn't work in the millennium. didn't work in the U.S. definitely doesn't work in Mexico. It, so worked, people... it worked for my family. We made a lot of money during that time. <laughs> well, good for you. No, I, I, well, let me understand this. You go into a bar four days before the election, no. and there's no... Everything's you, closed. Everything's shut. And you go and to... there's no liquor stores are open. But even if they were, there'd be nothing there. How, right? how did you handle that? Well, you know, everyone, you know, here the whole crew kind of went and chipped in and pretty much bought every every piece of alcohol that you could potentially get. Um, so people were stocked up, and that's that's kind of the problem. Is like it just doesn't work because people stock up, and that's about it. And then they're more drunk than ever. You know, you have a you have a nice voice on the phone. I, oh, I never t- I never heard you on the phone. Cause Thank you, you. Because when I see you out, you like look the other way like you don't know who I am. Is, who is, is that Vincent? Yeah, it's Vincent. Well, it's so funny because I feel <laughs> the same way about you. I haven't talked to you on the phone in ages. And I feel like every time I go out, I, I like look over and, and you kind of like quickly look the other way. And I kind of just like, you know, chalk it up to male insecurity. But, you know, there's, I there's, no, there's have nothing. It's a work not to be personally offended. Insecurity is not the words they use around me. Oh, but yeah? What do they use? Um, other things, but uh, insecurity, no. <laughs> thing, thing, things we can't say on the air. <laughs> Um, okay, so next time, next time we see each other, we uh, t- we chit and chat and hello. One you can another. look at each other. That would be nice. Yeah. That would be nice. We'll so, have a stare down. So uh, it's nice though. We all know each other. I mean, I've known Mila for, for years, a very long time since we were all little. It's since you, were, I think I met you when you were probably about fifteen years old. Yeah, yeah. yeah we've known each other a long, long time. And that's I remember it's been the, fun. the house you lived up with your with your mom up at, up Nichols Canyon there. Oh my God! <laughs> well, listen, my mom still lives in Mount Olympus, uh-huh. in Mountain of the Gods. <laughs> You know, it's it's it's, it's awesome. Lots of great eighties architecture. I love it up there. Where, which part of Mexico are you in? Actually, Mexico City. Oh, Mexico City's the greatest. My, almost my favorite place in the whole world. 
Well, it's beautiful, I have yeah. to say. It's You know, when I was coming on the plane, I said, you know, it looks kind of like Los Angeles with a lot more color. It's like very sprawling. <laughs> no, don't take that. <laughs> what do you, when, when you say color, can you, def, can you define color? Do you mean the elements? Primary, primary. Do you mean more of the element is what you mean? I'm talking yellow, green, red. <laughs> yeah, you're not, ta you're not talking epidural, right? <laughs> No, 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 you know, Crayola style. Now, now you being Russian, and I think there's a, there is a Russian-Mexico City connection as well, isn't there? Is there? I think so. Oh, there, there isn't. Is there a big Russian no? community here in Mexico City? There is not. And there isn't? <laughs> Please. You know, Please. Like, that's like the one place I don't there's think a, Russian There's Russian some style. sections of the zoo where certain animals never meet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there. You know, you can go any place in the world, and you'll find like an extensive Russian community. I think, except Mexico, it's like the one place that Russians didn't go because it's so hot here. It's like Russian people just cannot deal with the hot. But didn't what Lee Harvey Oswald went and met with the Russians in Mexico before he shot Kennedy? Listen, don't get all historical on me. Okay, <laughs> I know that you're an expert with all this like Kennedy stuff. Am I right? Don't Am I right? Go there, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how are they? How are they? Just had so two martinis, you know, at the bar. I'm not ready to get into like the no. history. So how, how do they serving again? How do they vote in Mexico? Well, you know, the elections are over, as you heard. What so. do they do? What do they do? They raise their hands. What do they do? How do they do it there in Mexico? Well, I, I, you know, they have polls, just like you know we do. I, I know, mean. but how do they really do it? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, lots of money and bribes and things, I'm sure. Well, I, no, I, I, listen, I don't know. I, like I said, you know, there there was definitely this law about not drinking, and incidentally, I, everyone was drunk. So I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of like backwards. Everything is a little backwards. What is a what is a liber like when you have a conservative and a and a liberal or a, a, a democratic uh, candidate in a country where no one works? Who do the, who does the conservative? Yeah. Who does whoa, the conservative? Whoa, whoa. Well, who does the conservative get the votes from? I mean, if they're all uneducated, who do you go for? Who do you Listen, try to suck in? You know, this is this is Vincent like, talking. The place where Gabriel Garcia Marquez lives, man. He's exactly. one of the most educated men in the exactly. world. And my favorite oh, yeah. writer. Oh, like, he's he thrills me. Yeah, <laughs> he thrills me. One of the great writers of all time. Yeah. Listen, you know, this is going to get really boring between you and your Kennedy. And Come on, you don't, need a, you don't need a job that bad that you got to go brown nose them people. I mean, come on, you're an international star. You worked in Europe, in America, you, you know, come on. <clears throat> Wait, what do you mean by brown nose? You're, you're one of is the... Is that kind of like a, a racial slur? <laughs> Brown nosing? Like, what are you trying to say? No, brown nosing. The, the, the connotation is that you put your nose in the in the region. The region. And up, and actually, you can. And, and a dark skinned person, you can't even tell the difference. At least. You know, I'm working here for the next like month and a half, so I'm gonna brown nose whoever I need to just to have a nice peaceful time. <laughs> 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 Which mo what movie are you doing? I'm doing Resident Evil 3. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Yeah. That's turned into a little uh, little cash cow there, huh? Franchise. Do you know, awesome. beca because I've held this resentment against you for so long with the, the I'm, snobby... I'm glad you the, finally admitted it no, on public no, radio. I had the, really yeah, I had the, I had the now, thing. I was, now everybody can hear that it wasn't me that ignored him, okay? No, it was me. It was me. It's, all, <laughs> it's always me. But anyway, I saw, I've been, I saw you in a couple films recently. At the, I was at uh, Rick Rubin's we saw it on a big screen, the Fifth Element. You're so good in movies that it was, uh, it was, uh -oh. it was great. You were where's so the, beautiful. You're good. You know who you, you were, you're as good as, you know that girl uh -oh. uh, in, in Terminator, no, uh, you and the girl in Terminator 3. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. That's so sweet of you. Kristana Loken, whatever Logan. her name is. I think she's awesome. Yeah, Thank she's you pretty. So much. You and her. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. You Thank and her. Thank you. That's very sweet of I'd you. I'd like to make a movie with you and her. Oh, I would love to make a movie. Call me her. and them. Not with you, but with me, her. you, sure. and Dupree. <laughs> <laughs> How come we never? You know, we never did a movie together. You know, we were thank almost God. cast. No, what do you mean, thank God? <laughs> Wait, you came to meet for Buffalo '66. Admit it on on radio. Yeah, please. You came. You wanted to be in Buffalo '66. I wanted to be in Buffalo. You. I met you at Lucky Strike. I remember you the day. Me. 
I didn't call you, okay? I don't call anybody. No, I, I didn't. Agents. Some, they I must have called. <laughs> they must have called because I didn't know you. Somebody call. called you somebody. You were a very sweet guy once <laughs> upon a time. I was good for one night. And I don't know what night. happened. Good for one night. Then, Bitter. But, good for know, one night. <laughs> you're an amazing artist. Your music is unbelievable. You heard my music? Unbelievable. Yeah, I heard wow. your music. I have your music. Wow. You I know. listen to your music, even though I don't like you. I love your music. Sometimes you gotta love uh, other things. You know things. what? So many people yeah. that I don't like, I love their music. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, but do you like him more now as a result of this uh, on-air conversation? What's better? Well, What's better? Not, but like, you know, <laughs> isn't it better to like somebody's work and hate them to, than I'd to have like to them? Look into your eyes again to see if I like you. How yeah. would you like to like a guy and hate his music? That's how many times have you done that? Not many. If I hate someone's music, I don't really like them. What if What if you've made love and then he puts it on? What? <laughs> <laughs> I told that that that's going a little. If I made love and then he put on, oh, bad music. Yeah, his. Uh, hey, no, by I the way, bad music. music before we made love. Ah, smart. See, you're smart. You were. You're a smart, resourceful girl and a beauty. Let me hear the Thank song you. first. That's, that's very sweet. Nice. What do you want to hear? No, I just. Oh. Uh, I, 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 when you're coming I back, you're coming were... back in six weeks? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, don't drink the water down there. Oh, don't worry. I'm taking acid off. Where, are you, where are, you, are you? Are you coming back to L.A. or, or back to New York? Um, I'm going to L.A. and then I, I go to Europe to do some work. And, you know, I have to get back because uh, me and Carmen have a clothing line, Yova the Chalk, which we're working on our spring collection in September. We're going to be showing in New York. So, you know, a lot of stuff happening and really busy. But I'm going to be going to Europe and then back to L.A., finish the collection, go to New York, do that, and then do another film. How old are you now? I'm 30. Oh, you look so good. Like, uh, <laughs> I look so good. I'm 30. Why wouldn't I look good? <laughs> you know, because God's got the system. God's got the system. You know, he turns you it around. Look good. The new 20. God's, God's got the system. 30 is the new 20. And 20 is the new 10, and 10 is the new prenatal. You haven't heard? No. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? Like, women today at 30 are just like babies. That's what I think. Yeah. My wife, I mean, I my look wife is 30. No, listen, your wife is gorgeous. And my partner, Carmen, uh, Carmen Hawk, uh, you know Carmen. I know Carmen. And Donovan, you know Carmen, too. I mean, gorgeous. I mean, and she's got an eight-year-old daughter, too. I mean, it is, listen, women today are not like they were 20 years ago, even. I mean, it's different. It's like a positive outlook. And I don't know. It's, it's just different. It's yeah, my Aunt Vera, when she was 30, she looked, uh, <laughs> she looked uh, 65. She looked 65. Listen, when my mom was 30... <laughs> She had immigrated, given up a, a huge career in the, in the former Soviet Union, okay, moved to be a housekeeper for Brian De Palma with an alcoholic husband who, God bless him, is an amazing man who's given up drinking now, my dad, but like, you know, she was, had me by the time she was 24 and a half, like she was an adult, man. I look at pictures of my mom at 30, and she looked beautiful, but she looked older than me. I mean, I'm sorry, it was like a whole mental attitude. I mean, she acted older. Like, I'm a kid compared to who she was at my age. So I think that goes across the board for all women today. It's just women are just younger mentally. Absolutely. She bled for you. Oh, it, yes, she did. Have you been following... As a matter of fact... <laughs> have, you, have, you been following uh, have you been following Russian tennis these days? No. Oh, there's a girl. What's going on with Russian tennis? There's a girl. She's a little stocky, but uh, her name is Denara. <laughs> do in tennis. N not, not, not always. Denara Safina. She's a, my favorite girl in the whole world. I'm going to try to put her in my next film. But in the old days, they, the girls used to wear in tennis. I went to a couple pro matches. Very high skirts, and it was basically a panty fest or whatever. I mean, it was unbelievable. But they don't do that now. I went to see a, a match. They no, they have like... Uh, Long pants and short. They they don't ham it up. Wow! Like I always thought they were the little mini skirts. They changed. They sort of shut it down. Well, isn't there that amazing Russian girl who's like going out with the, the Iglesias boy? Marapova. Yeah, she's gorgeous, right? Isn't she? Tennis? No, Danara Safina's the the Russian to watch. Okay. Right. right, 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 right. Well, you know, next time I, 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 I you know, get to go see her a tennis game, I'll definitely look out for her. How come all Saying the that, 
How I don't we... get to them that much because I'm not a big sports person. If I do sports, I like boxing, I like martial arts, I like cage fighting and things like that. Did you notice, more violent. But did you notice when you're in Russia that the, that the girls, that it feels like uh, you're in a pay-per-view club, if you know what I mean? It you feels... know what, Russia today what, what's going is, on like, with that? is like Rome. Why are the girls, like, do they all like feel like... It's like the fall of Rome. It's oh. very decadent mm. and, and very desperate, mm. you know? It's such a huge... Uh, it's it's just uh, such a huge difference between who has and who has not over there, and and they love to show it, you know. And and those they girls, spend, they spend. You know, the, if it wasn't for <laughs> the Russians right now, Europe, Paris, you know, France, Italy, these places that we wouldn't that's have a, a modeling industry. Well, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. The stores would shut down. I mean, they go in and they buy. You know, they go to uh, a Paris store to Dior well, or something, it goes and they back spend to, like uh, insecurity. It's I mean, incredible. It's just that whole thing of needing to feel good by you know spending money, which is. Which and is then, pretty crazy and, and really sad because you know Russian people in in it's 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 such a crazy paradox to me because they're the most like elevated uh, religious spiritual intellectual artistic on one side on the other side they're almost like beasts uh, they're they're just bestial like just uh, horrific in their passions horrific in in their slurs horrific in you know the way they lead their lives i mean it's such it's they're, such a they're my favorite paradox. they're my favorite that's unbelievable that's, people that's, really. that's vincent's favorite side of the russian no 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 i like Rus- no 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 i like the, it's i went there when i was very young i took uh, i got a one day visa and i went there to moscow when i was very well, you young. know i was just there because because uh, last year, me and Carmen went to produce our last spring collection in the Ukraine. And it was insane, man. I mean, beautiful, incredible people on the one hand. And on the other hand, it's just so sad because you see these gorgeous girls, you know, just gorgeous girls that literally could be, you know, the most amazing dancers working for, like, Jennifer Lopez or Justin Timberlake. And they're stripping at clubs. It's an honest you job. Know? And it, it's, honest job. Honest work. But, but the thing honest Honest work. Hey, these girls are I beautiful and they're talented. They're like they're hanging off the ceilings of these huge clubs. I mean, it's like Caligula or Nero or something. Like these clubs are just huge, and the, you know they're they're putting clubs on that cost like five million dollars a night, dude. Wow. They're insane, and these girls like coming down out of the ceiling like with rings, like flipping rings on their hands and feet, like hanging off swings, and they're like Cirque du Soleil, but like strippers. And you go. <laughs> Can you get Sounds a good, can you get a good deal on flights out there? Right now? <laughs> <laughs> how big are, how big are you there? Are you big I'll there? Uh, um, Mila, I'm sure she's huge. Well, I don't know well, how you know, big. I mean, like, I, mean uh, I, I think I'm definitely like a national mascot in a way. You know, I mean, there's not many Russian people that have sort of come to America and, and become successful. So of course, I you know, definitely over there, people love me. But then, I how mean, come in Buffalo they they don't love me? <laughs> 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 I don't know, Vincent. I mean, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. This doesn't answer that question. Doesn't seem right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. That's like you got to go to Buffalo and work it out. <laughs> Cuz uh I, it seems like something that bothers you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's but you know I think I'd I'm sure be, they love you a lot more than you know. I'd rather be big in Russia. The guy like the the girls, the faces there, they're so pretty. They are. They're gorgeous, and that's what makes it even more sad. Is the you know the more beautiful a girl is, the more sad it is when she does things that are just you know below the line in a way. You know, it's it's in depends, my head. It depends on how you look at it. <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess it's different for guys and girls, but you know, it, it you know what it's not though because if you were looking at the woman you love, you wouldn't want to see her doing things that were you know, disrespectful the, the, to herself. You know, you know what? You want to know course, something? If you want to just go out no, and you know, that's the old somebody, that's the old Vinnie Gallo. The old Vinnie Gallo looking for the 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 one, you know, the good heart, the virginal, she's would never do anything. No. All girls are the same. They're all I won't say the word. Can we say it on the air? Bitches and hoes. <laughs> Whore. Use the wise Whore. words of Snoop Dogg. I'm glad, I'm glad. They're all whores. Okay? Like the you gotta love the whore. You, you've you gotta learn to love the whore. Such an intelligent guy, and now, you know, it's great because I think you're just a lot more accessible because, you know, you're really kind of brought into the whole kind of Snoop Dogg mentality, which I think is really <laughs> cool. You know, I, you've changed. You become more commercial. And no, you just don't yeah. judge. Where are my you bitches? Don't 
is that? I stop judging girls for what they do sexually with other men. I mean, who cares? You're right. No, really. really. You gotta love the whore. You love the You're whore. So bitter. It's not even. Funny. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true. It's not true. I, Listen, I used to the be. Fact uh, is, you know, it's too bad. I don't know what happened, dude, but you know, you'll find it. You'll find it again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so everybody all, gets. You have to blame yourself because it, 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 if you look at the timing, it was right at the time when you turned against me when everything <laughs> unraveled. Listen, I just didn't want to do a porno movie with you. Like, why do you have to be that way? No, I, this we met for buff, not listen, for bunny. Listen, you called me. I was what seventeen or eight? No, like nineteen years old when you called me for for bunny. Like no, way for buff. before you for did buff. it for buff. No, for both. Yeah, but you, funny. Called, you don't remember or what? What were you drunk? You called me. I've never had my, a drink in my life. I was still living with my mother when you called me and said, "You know, I really want to do this like really artistic porno." Film. I've never used art. Art. You used totally it. used art. Oh my I've god! I've never used the you word art. I may have said. I may have said farts. <laughs> I think. I and think you, and you misheard yeah. me. I think oh, they've started. They've started oh, serving. Oh, uh, selective memory. I've never you, used the word art in my life. So. Oh, in my life, the bars are the bars are open. Like, it's I had a friend art. Porno film, <laughs> once. And I was in shock. Like this is my friend Vincent, who I had like a little crush on, even, and he's like coming to me asking me to do like an artistic porno film, and what? you what? know. What? And the what? saying that, and what's I wrong with that? It, I thought it was beautiful. And what's wrong done, with that? And it was what? gorgeous. And what's, it was beautiful. What's wrong with a little uh, contact between a man and a woman? Nothing. Oh. I would just prefer to keep it behind closed doors. There's nothing wrong with that. To each his own. And it was a beautiful movie, and I saw it. And we like, would have filmed every, like, behind everything closed you do, doors. Vincent, I love the things that come out of you in that sense. You're an amazing artist, and I love that about you. You know, it, it's, it's my choice whether I want to be involved with some of them, but I can definitely enjoy them as a spectator for sure it's beautiful the movie was gorgeous did you see brown bunny of course i did wow it was beautiful you saw Absolutely brown bunny beautiful. did you see buffalo 66 i did so you see the things yet you give me the evil eye in person i don't give you this evil is eye. Good. I always, this listen, is good that's not fair that's not this fair. is good i'm not you know I, i'm not gonna we have mutual friends that like whatever weird things happen I'm not about to like go up and be like, hey, what's up, dude? When like, you know, I felt like the last five, six years that I've seen you at parties, you've pretty much blown me off. And you know, whatever, that's fine. I, I didn't care. put the hex I on don't you. I care though. because it's like, dude, I, I never whatever. put the hex on you. I never I have put the so hex much on you. Shit going on that I, I don't even have time to deal with bull. Especially I didn't put, from men. but I didn't put the hex on. I, I deal. I, I the Ebert. only person I put the hex on Ebert. And look at him now. Is like my girlfriends at this point, because guys, I have my man that loves me, so I'm very, you know, secure. Who's so the man? I, who's I, the man that loves you? My boyfriend, my fiance. Who? Who's your fiance? He's a guy that you don't know. Well, is he white? Is he black? What he's is he? White. Yeah, he's British. But that's not, that's questionable whether that's white. I mean, it's it's light. It's definitely light. Pale. Well, listen, it's definitely you know, light. I don't know about, like, if you look through the DNA where it would end up, but he's definitely British. I usually take a swatch with the uh, folks of everyone I'm with. You take a, th a throat culture. I take a swatch. Whoa. <laughs> Check out. You can tell. I, Mila, I, 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 I won't even question that. Mila, I hope you're not holding any of this against me, okay? I, I, <laughs> I, I didn't know that I was going to unlock uh, Pandora's box here. No, but it's good to sort of, like, vent your personal frustration. Who's public. the guy? Who's the Brit? Is he in a band? Is he in a no, band? No, he's not. He's not in a band. Is he a filmmaker? He's a filmmaker. A producer or a filmmaker? Um, Both. He's a writer and a producer and a filmmaker. Has he put you in a film yet? Um, Yeah, we've made a few films together. Uh-huh. I didn't know that. Yeah, we met um, on the first Resident Evil. Oh, right. This guy. Uh, this yeah. guy. How long has it been? It's been, well, off and on for the last six years. Wow, I didn't know that. Wow, that's great. Yeah. He must be a nice man. He's a wonderful man. He's awesome. He's incredible. And, and you know, he, he's dealt with a lot of my crap, and he's still here, and he still loves me. And, you know, I, I, you, can't, you can't say anything against that. When you, know, you going to have when, a baby? When people love you through your worst periods, that's, that's what proves it. I mean, that's what's important. When you can um, yeah, no know that you were at your worst, and someone still loves you, and someone is still there, and not, and not you know, trying to, like, 
put a knife in your stomach and twist it and with little words or little things like just sweet and honest and pure and beautiful like it's 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 yeah, gr- amazing i'm very lucky girls very lucky. girls uh, haven't even made it past my best so i i haven't got that far yet <laughs> well maybe you know you got to you got to find that maybe I should, beautiful maybe the- pure side of yourself again cuz you know i think you're a little angry when it comes to women <laughs> Just a bit. Just a little bit. Not. <laughs> but like I said, you're an amazing guy, and you amazing things come out of you. So you're gonna find an incredible girl that's gonna no, that's I'm gonna not. Be with me. No, uh, I'm with, not. with you, like my boyfriend is with me. No, he's no, no. Be able to deal with the worst of you, and no. he'll be there, and you'll find that no. appreciation. You know? No, my, th- th- I th- it won't happen that oh, way with me. Don't be so self indulgent. Of course it won't. It won't. It won't. And I'm I'm too old for that now. Anyway. Too old? How old are you? Like 40? 44. 44? Well, you mm-hmm. look great. Don't worry about it. You haven't seen me uh, in the in my baby. I saw so. you at Paris's party. Oh, yeah, that's right. You, oh, right. You scorned me there, too. Yeah, that was just recently. Yeah, the, the, the evil so eye is scorned, so scorned at Paris Hilton's house. And you look, look away, like, ooh. It was like, okay. Listeners, listeners you're really I'm getting 30, the, in, this is the inside. This. It's this is the inside. You know, you, you people wonder, like, how celebrities sort of handle each other, you know. I think, <laughs> I think I think the uh, the radio listener is really getting a, a bird's eye view, an inside peek at inside a Paris party. Inside, of, you're inside a Paris party, <laughs> watching Vincent get scorned by Mila. It's Listen, <laughs> and you know Vincent, that was actually a very epic party. That was the last party, huh, between Paris and and that and, guy and the uh, and the the other guy. Yeah, that was a guy. that was a kind of monumental moment. I felt so, I saw it coming. I, I felt pretty like I saw it coming. I saw oh, it coming. Did com- you? Yeah. Oh, I see, see, I didn't. I they saw it coming. Cute together. Paris looks cute with anyone. Oh, well, that's true. The, the guys are sort of they come and go. That's true. Yeah. She's adorable. She's like a. You, it's like a cut and paste, like a collage. Well, that song you wrote about her. Oh my god! I cannot <laughs> oh, we gotta stop go to listening to it. Hey, it's so beautiful. Thank you, Mila. Yeah, we got to uh, we got to pay the fiddler. <laughs> well, listen, you guys, thank you so much. And Vincent, it was great to sort of like get it all out in the open. Donovan, you're the best. I love you. You're amazing. Can you I say you love so much? Can you say you love me too? <laughs> <laughs> no one ever says you know nice what? things I, to me. I have to see you and look in your eyes. But Donovan, I know cares about me for real. So. I do. I do really care about you. So thank you so much, and thank have you. a great time, guys. And Enjoy so Mexico much. City. Great talking to you, you sure you don't want to say you love me before you go? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Wow, that was interesting. Mila Jovovich, she's down in Mexico City shooting Resident Evil 3, and, and she's she's one hot tamale. <laughs> um, we are going to go to a commercial, and when we come back, we're going to get another girl on the line with Vincent, because it's interesting. All right. Hey. Whoa, I sound weird now. Oh, there we go. I sound better now. <laughs> Vincent. Yeah. How are you? Are we back on? We're back on the air live oh, that's, in that's the nice. 103.1 FM. That's good to know. I hope, hope you're having a better experience than uh, your last experience. We are, we're are we taping this show, right? Yes. Okay, good. We're By taping. the way, you know, did you know uh, Sonic Youth is in town tonight? I heard, you yeah. know... They're, they're playing at the little radio warehouse downtown. Uh, and you know that, that gig tonight is being sponsored by Indy 103.1 FM. Really? Yeah. It's being sponsored by this radio station. Wow. What are they yeah. doing? Maybe we can get them on the line. We could. We can call Kim. Kim's a nice person. She's a very nice person. No, when she's not mean to me, she's nice. Well, you guys have a long history. When she's not mean, mm-hmm. she's nice. She's never been mean to me. No. No, she hasn't. But she's been mean to me. Why? I don't know why. I've been so nice to her. You have. You're like yes. a member of the family, practically. Well, I've I've loved her in the best way that I could love a, a friend, and she's hurt me many times. <laughs> Is Thurston mean to you? No. He's not. He's a nice guy. Thurston's the funniest, uh, probably the funniest guy in the whole world. I did, uh, when Sofia Coppola and Zoe Cassavetes had their TV show, their short-lived TV show on Comedy Central. I wonder why. <laughs> they had a segment called Thurston's Alley. Uh-huh. Which was the alley right next to the Keith Haring store in New right, York. Right. And that, that was Thurston's alley, and he'd interview people <laughs> in the alley. And Nancy Boy, my old band, did the song Thurston's Alley, which went something like this Here we are, 
Here we are in Thurston's Alley. Here we are. We're down around Thurston's Alley. You can sing, you could dance, you could model, you can act. He'll talk about it with you. Anything goes, anything at Thurston's Alley. It's catchy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's as good as my Cracker Barrel song. How does the Cracker Barrel song? Go? Crackling up on the barrel, barrel. Crackling up on the barrel, Cracker Barrel, Cracker Barrel. That's awesome. Yeah. They, you, they should use it, right? They should. Did yeah. you give it to them? No, no, yeah. You know, if they Cracker Barrel, what you got to do is if they recognize you in any way, they comp the meal. Right. The people in California might not know Cracker Barrel because they're everywhere else but the state of California. But it's this great restaurant. Roadside. Where, yeah, it looks, it looks like a country. It looks like, you know, how how you would think if you drove across the country, find a little cute little country Bis restaurant. Biscuits and yeah. gravy. But it's all, they're all the same contrived. Right. But they're, they're good. They're, and they, and they uh, lean towards the, the lighter skin. Uh so it's it feels like you're out in you know in America, right? So you go there. It's a good American. Barrel. If they recognize you, if they recognize you, <laughs> they got a photograph of you. And every if they recognize about. you, they comp the meal. So you go in with two people. You you eat like for both. You get things to go, and then at the last minute, you have the friend say, "Oh, there's uh, that guy from Buffalo '66," and then they they come over. Oh, Mister, what's your name again? Yeah, Mister Gallo. Uh, and they they comp the meal. Cracker Gallo. Yeah. Johnny, it was Johnny Ramone's favorite restaurant. In fact, the first gift Johnny Ramone ever gave me was the Cracker Barrel map, which they hand out free at the checkout. So you you used to uh, drive back and forth all the time. I always do. Yeah, I just got back a couple like a week ago. I was on the road again. You remember I lent you my car once to drive across the country. <laughs> And I got the my Durango. I got my, I, the the Durango. Durango. Gave me the figures Don, Don, you know, Donovan would have. Not not the, the real man's car, not yeah. the full size, not a dually. You know, he had the Durango. The Dodge Durango. Yeah, the Durango. It was, a, it was hard to meet chicks yeah, it was. in the Durango. Yeah. Because they were all driving a Durango themselves. Uh, can we play the song? Can we play one song? Or we're going to play... Oh, right. We have, uh, we have, we have another commercials? 15 minutes of commercials. So uh, go g get some food. And when... Uh, get some food. <laughs> get some food and, and come back. <laughs> Take a... You know that, that new tag, that new Cam Freddy tag, I feel uh, completely disconnected from. Uh, this is the longest day of my life. I don't understand what that means. Does that mean this is the longest two hours of anyone's life? <laughs> I think it's interesting. <laughs> Who came up with the Camp Freddy uh, name? Camp Freddy was a character in the original Italian job with Michael Caine. Uh, Remember, they were the, there was a group of guys and they were all gangsters. Not and the they great were remake. This not the great the Mark Wahlberg yeah. remake. This is the original with Michael Caine. And one of the gangsters, his name was Camp Freddy. And he was like a dandy. You know, double-breasted Not the great remake. Not the one with yeah. uh, 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 who Mark Wahlberg and Charlize Theron. Yeah. And um, most staff for yeah, my, especially him. Yeah, no, yeah, it was not that one. Great S remake, especially him. No, this was the original with Michael Caine. Right before they got the big stars. Before to, they got the big it. stars. Yeah, exactly. The original. Uh, go see the original Italian Job. It's uh, it's it's a good film. It's actually one of those movies where the last scene in the film. I'll just ruin it for everybody. There's a a bus teetering on the edge, right? Like this. It's teetering. It's about to fall. And Michael Caine says, wait a minute, I've got a great idea. And then the film ends. That's the last line of the film. Wait a minute, I've got a great idea. The end. So you don't know what happens. Huh. Interesting. Oh, I'm, I'm still in suspense. Yeah. <laughs> Forty <laughs> years later, you're wondering what happened. And, uh... Uh, yep, top of the second hour. I'm going to give away uh, four tickets. Four tickets to Hedwig and the Angry Inch. How much are, is a ticket? Is this like eight bucks a ticket? No, it's like twenty five, thirty bucks a ticket. Okay, so this is a hundred over a hundred dollars worth. Over a hundred dollars in value. Yeah. What can, do they scalp for the retail or I'll, half price? I'll throw in a couple of drinks as well. Okay. 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 This is uh, tomorrow night at uh, the Roxy on Sunset. I'm doing Hedwig and the Angry Inch for a couple more weeks uh, before my wife divorces me. <laughs> and after you see the show, you can go right next door to the Rainbow and eat like a like a king. Exactly. One eight seven seven nine hundred one zero three one. But let's let's. Uh, What's the content? How do they? Well, win? let's think of a question. Uh, let's think of a question uh, uh, in, 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 that that relates to you, to Vincent. <laughs> 
And, uh, and, and we'll think of that question. Do we have a song? Because maybe we'll line up a song. And we also have Jamie Kennedy. We're going to call him Yeah, we up. have a song. We have a song. Let's, let's go with uh, Tape Machine 2. Tape Machine 2. This is a, a, a British band, Tucky Buzzer, that was uh, produced by uh, Bill Wyman of the Rolling Stones. But this is their best album, which he didn't produce. I produced all their other records. This was produced in Spain. The song is called You're Not Alone. Have it. Okay, so the contest, Donovan. Yes, yes. That was it, that was a beautiful song, by the way. Thank you. What was that again? Thank you. Let's move on. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, you probably never hear that song again on radio. That's which which is why it was so special. So I'm giving away four tickets to Hedwig and the Angry Inch, which is a fantastic show. You got to come see me and Hedwig. And he, he, he said he'd throw in three drinks. And I'll, I'm going to throw in... Uh, which means uh, one, the designated driver doesn't drink. That's right. So one and guy He's always gets, thinking, Donna, always worrying about people. So he's a beautiful person. I'm, I care about people. One guy mm -hmm. gets a club soda and the other three gets uh, a, a Budweiser. And uh, the... the my, my favorite thing is like when the, you know, drunk driving kills millions every day. You know, millions of people, innocent people, but yeah. uh, you know, five people die in the war. You know, and this, there's five billion people on the planet. Three people get killed, and it's a big deal. But they're all hammered every night. All the smoking, left wing commies, smoking, drinking. All the left wing commie bastards. They're all like driving drunk every chance they Dr get. Going yeah. from from high you know, to the, LAX. The fur protesters. They're protesting the fur. How many abortions did each one of them have? <laughs> the animals. This is Vincent Gallo, the good American. <laughs> coming to you. Okay, so the here's the here's the the trivia question to win uh the four uh tickets that Dono's giving away in the three drinks. Um the question is who what what is the name of the writer from Entertainment Weekly? She's a film critic. She's the most ugly film critic they have. She's the meanest film critic they have, and she's the most Jewish film critic they have, and I'm going to give you a little hint. Her name is spelled L I S A, second name S W A R T Z B A U M. First one to figure that one out wins the tickets. That's one eight seven seven nine hundred one zero three one. I think he's given a couple of Ugliest, clear. Ugliest, meanest, and most Jewish critic, film critic from Entertainment Weekly. That's a, Vincent Gallo a fine, speaking. Fine magazine. It's Vincent Gallo speaking. You're not listening to uh, to uh, Rush Limbaugh here. You're on Indy <laughs> 1031. Uh, so let's see if we have any calls. Yeah. Hello. Hey, hello. Hold on. Lisa Schwartzbaum. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa Schwartzbaum. He's a genius. Yeah, a genius. genius. You, genius. What's, your, what's your name? My name is Edgar, and I'm a theater geek. From, you know, I studied it and all that. I'm dying to see the show. Edgar, <laughs> Edgar, the theater geek, you've just won four tickets and three drinks to see Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Right on. Tomorrow night at Roxy Theater, you've been given the tickets by uh, the star of Hedwig, that's me, Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and Vincent Gallo, who's a, who's you know a star in his own <laughs> mind. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so uh, we'll put you on hold, Edgar, the film geek, and <laughs> and we'll get your we'll get your information. Theater geek, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> oh, theater geek. Sorry, theater. I say theater. How do you say theater? Theatre. <laughs> theater. Theater. I can't say theater. You know, when was the last time you went to? I just I saw Al Pacino do uh, Salome a couple of weeks ago. Uh, How was that? It was unbelievable. He was so good. Al's still the greatest of all time. But he's ever, the greatest. ever since he's done Scarface, he's never been able to shake the accent. He's never shaken uh, Tony Montana after that. If you're good once in your life, I mean, if you have one moment, that's enough. Yeah, he's had more than one. So. That's like Eminem. Exactly. He's waiting for his one good moment, and I'm sure it's going to come. So we're we're having you know we're trying to hit Jamie Kennedy. I don't know if he's listening, but you know the, who's your who's your favorite girls of, like in music of today? Who do you like? Me, girls, I've you like Hillary had, Duff. You don't know, you think she's the most pretty like, girl in I, the world? I like Fiona Apple. I think she's weird and dark and mysterious. She's and, dark. Yeah, she's dark. dark. Not fully dark. She's because she's a half and half. But I like you don't like Hillary Duff though, huh? Hillary Duff. I think don't you think she's, she's better got, than Haley Duff? She's got so pretty. And, and uh, who else do you like? Um. Paris, I think, is uh, you know. Don't you think Christina Aguilera is talented? I, I like her. Yeah, I think she's great. Um, Do you like Karen O? Karen O from yeah. the yeah yeah not so. No, no, no. I like her in spite of the fact that she dated that Spike. half a man, Spike Jones. Yeah, yeah. That half a man and three quarters uh, filmmaker and a whole mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Uh, 
I like the girl Elisa from the Magic Markers. She's nice. I don't know her. Meg, I like Meg White. Meg White. Meg White. She's cute. The girl from The Sounds. You ever uh, hear that band, The Sounds? I did. Hear Swedish that. band. The girl Goldfrapp. Oh, you the think girl Goldfrapp. Goldfrapp? I, yeah, but wait. She looks good in pictures. Yeah, yeah you, you can know, tell. She's you can a tell. Little, but she's good. I saw her she's in concert. Good. I went to the. How Wilson. did she look in? in Fantastic. The, in the they yeah. had a, a a fan right in front of her, just blowing, and it was. Just, yeah, she's good. Yeah, she was hot. There you go. There you go. Women. Okay, should we play a song? Let's play a song. I don't think we're going to... Let's play a song. Let's play... Go to four, Machine Four. It's a, a song uh, from a great uh, New York band, uh, Contortions. Well, that you was think the, of You think of any other hot chicks who, who've made music? Um, Debbie Harry, back in the day. Yeah. Gorgeous. She, she She's still... Pretty. Yeah, she is. No, she is. I saw yeah. her at the Cirque du Soleil Beatles thing. She's in a good girl. Hot. She was at the Cirque du Soleil Beatles thing, wow. Yeah, she was. Yeah. Wendy O. Williams from the Plasmatics before the poor thing offed herself. Yeah. yeah. She was she was she was never good looking, but she 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 could take it like a champ. Oh wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Vin Vincent, you've upset somebody. Hold what? on. Hello? Hello? Hello, Ma? Is this you, Ma? Uh, well, not not if we're talking about who's harder than you are. Is this mom? Like here's some TK. Is I'd that like you, mom? TK's penis. Is the, is I don't know. Does your mom tell you that she'd like to see TK's penis? Whose penis? TK's TK. not here. Who's TK? Do you want to see I Darren's want to penis? He's here. P uh, TK's I, not here, but Jonesy. I'd like to see his penis. You'll Let's take it. You'll penis take penis it from any. You'll take anybody's penis. Please, uh -huh. who you who you kidding? Now you were upset about the uh, us us talking about pretty, pretty performance. Cut. Consistently sitting <clears throat> around verbalizing who you'd like to have sexual intercourse with. Why don't you talk about their music? We We've I never, never heard their music. music. I didn't who, mention who sex either. Who has time to listen to music? <laughs> Oh, come on. I mean, who, guys, what do you think? So uh, all, all we do all day, like you well, sit around listening to music? Take, take the same amount of time to talk about I'm always guys. on the phone trying on to lure someone air. over. I hardly have a, a moment's free gay. time. Listen, listen to me. Myself and gay guys, we want some sexual entertainment, too, if we're going to go there. I, we get, I mean, that's such an old... Cool, like, Gays got you know, their own station. Topic. Okay, gays got their own station. Please. I thought this is an alternative station. Not alternative lifestyle, alternative music. Not lifestyle. We we qualify. No, no, we said alternative platform. music. Alternative we didn't say alternative station. lifestyle. Station, you have We're very traditional in our lifestyle here the on this station. And the gays I'm speaking there. on behalf of the station here. They've authorized me to speak on their behalf. I so, saw it. They and they a, he, he signed something. The station frowns. Screw the station. Frowns. <laughs> I, I want to hear some male, some some female and gay male sexual entertainment. Okay. The lesbians. Let's the go to three. The lesbians threes. and the men get entertained. All all the time. Let's go to take. Uh, the, this I've is for you. Demographics would like. Here's to be a love addressed. song. This is Chicago, a great band, the, for, for the speaking for the gays and the women right here. Go, go to play the love song. Here you go, baby. That went out to uh, all the gays, lesbians, and women in Los Angeles. I hope you enjoyed that. That it, I'm feeling. I'm feeling a little gay right now myself. <laughs> We've got Lawrence Welk playing on the on the TV in here as well. Next, the next up, we have something really interesting. Uh, we have, uh, we're gonna do a, a, a series of uh, nepotism. We're gonna show how nepotism works, and, and uh, we're gonna play. We were gonna play you a track from Marilyn Monroe singing a song, but uh, the station doesn't have it. But we do have a track of the great American singer-songwriter, a big hero, influence of mine, uh, another good American. Uh, and this recording was done at a facility uh, in Northern California. This is uh, the great singer-songwriter Charles Manson. And afterwards, we're going to follow up with uh, Charles Manson and Marilyn Monroe's son, Marilyn Manson, doing uh, in the ghetto. And you you're going to see uh, you're going to see how the talent just uh, it just flows out of the folks right to the kid. So tape uh, machine four. This is uh, Charles Manson live. San Quentin. Okay, uh, that was uh, Charles Manson, a beautiful, uh, beautiful songwriter. Um, that was recorded a couple years ago, uh, so you can clearly see he's still got it. Um, well, he's he's got a lot of time on his hands. A lot of, a lot of time on his hands. So he's thinking he's, right. This this next thing was done. It's uh, it's me on guitar and Lucas Haas on bass, and we had the great a uh, great guest singer, the great and clearly talented, you know, seeping with musical talented talent, Marilyn Manson. Uh, doing uh, 
in the ghetto. Wow. Uh, you can see why that uh, the queer Jan Wenner put him twice on the cover of Rolling Stone. I mean, he's clearly a mega talent. It was a big honor for me to record that with him, and it's the highlight of my career. There you have it. That was Marilyn Manson, Vincent Gallo, and Lucas Haas doing In the Ghetto. And before that, that was Charles Manson in San Quentin. <laughs> and uh, I mean, you know, again, this this you don't know who he got. You don't know Marilyn Manson if he t he got it from his mom, Marilyn, or, Marilyn, his, or his, his father Charlie. Manson. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I he think got the best of both worlds. Clearly, this is this is a, a, a we were saying it's it you're you're stern with brains. <laughs> You know, I mean, this is uh, this is good. This is good. I think uh, I think uh, Michael Steele uh, should seriously consider uh, giving Vincent the morning show. And uh, I think I'll take it. I think he'll he'll take it. You heard it here right now. Vincent Gallo wants to take over the morning show on Indy 1031. I think the numbers will go true to roof. True to roof. True to roof. True to roof. As they say, we're going to do a, a couple minutes commercials, but we, uh, stay tuned because we have the most exciting last half hour of the Camp Freddy Radio two hour special coming up right now on Indy 1031. You're listening to Camp Freddy Radio, Indy 1031. This is Donovan Leach, Indy 1031 Camp Freddy. I'm here with Vincent Gallo. And uh, I, I think a lot of like groundbreaking material has, has, uh, has come through tonight on the airwaves. We've heard Marilyn Manson, Charles Manson. We have Mila Dravovich down in Mexico City. Uh, we didn't get Naomi Campbell on the line. We can't. Let's, find inter let's interview her without. With it, with, let's interview her uh, by ourselves. Uh, what would we ask her? We'd say, uh, "What happened with the maid? Uh, what happened with the maid? Yeah, what happened with the maid? Was she uh, Spanish or was she your color, Naomi? Which which one was she that made you so upset that you threw something at her? Well, she's she's got a history of beating up. Yeah, she's a maids. violent. A vi <laughs> violent supermodel. Yeah, she's. It's like uh, it's like watching the Watts riots. Just uh, she does it all herself. And it's her twentieth year as a model as well. <laughs> and she's uh, yeah. And she and she didn't even start till she was thirty one years old. So do the math. There you go. She should have called in. To she should have herself. called in. That's what you get. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> who else? Uh, Jamie Kennedy. We missed him. <sighs> We, we no, got nothing to say about him except Jamie Kennedy's show is is is, is very funny. I wonder out. how I wonder how Rick Rubin's doing these days. You know, he moved to Point Dune. Did he? Yeah. Uh, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. He he's, doesn't come. He stays in Malibu. He doesn't do anything. He can't produce anymore. He's washed up. He's twice as fat now as he was just uh, six months ago, which was already fat. And he's he's decided to. Stay in Malibu. He's, he's, That's what happens when you don't drink, you don't smoke, you're vegetarian. Yeah. You know? Are you vegetarian? Come on. You? You ask me that? And you're not a vegetarian. You ask me no, that? No, I know. You eat also buco, right? <laughs> 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 Woo! And, uh... But that's all right, you know. And and again, this is not your average Camp Freddy radio. I know people tu you tuning know, in the, tonight. For the record, for the record, I never really, I I saw Dave Navarro when when he was with uh, Jane's Addiction. Mm -hmm. I didn't I, I I was focused on other things at that show, that particular show that I saw them. But Rick Rubin, for the record, told mm -hmm. me of anybody he's worked with. He was the most talented guitar player, Dave Navarro. Yes, and that means more than John Frusciante. Mm. He said Dave Navarro is the best guitar player he's ever worked with. Wow. That's good, because Frusciante has got John's style. Great. John's great, but... But Dave. Dave's number one. Dave's number one. He's number one in my book as well. But uh, I, 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 hope, I hope they're listening to the show tonight, because it, it's, been, it's been good. Where are they? Where are they? I don't know. Dave they, were, is, they were busy. Dave is doing... Uh, he was busy. He's, he's had, he, he's he didn't want to miss a, a show. He's doing Rockstar Season 2. So he's got a whole other thing going on right now. Is he now. still married? Is he still married? Yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah. I've been a little out of the loop, but, you know, as far as I can tell. What's the most you guys got for Camp Freddy show? Um, we're, we're doing pretty well. What's the most you got? What's the most? Yeah. Two. 
Two. Two. Two's good. <laughs> Two is good. How right? did you divvy it up? Who takes the chunk? Uh, well, you know, we pay ourselves. We each have our, you know, the six of us in the band. Right. And then we pay our guests. Right. And then we pay our crew. And we pay travel and expenses. You still have the beautiful and sexy Deb Foss working for you? Deb Foss yeah. is, is, is how, our how co-manager. Hot, how hot. And she does like three versions of the Jewish broad look, too. She does the curly hair one. Mm-hmm. She does the layers. This, now she got, and and now then she the got straight, the straight with the she bangs. She does the tattooed Jewish girl. Girl, which is uh, like a uh, blasphemy, but mm-hmm. she does that. Good. She does them all good. She, she's not going to get buried in a Jewish cemetery. Best That's rack, for sure. best rack in L.A. And Fox. she's she's got a, a boyfriend now too. Yeah, well, you know. There you go, Deb. Best rack in L.A. Best rack. In Los Angeles, Deb Foss. You can see her uh, every Wednesday night at Club Hyde. If you if you can get in, because Hyde is Hyde is the hot spot now. You just uh, drop a penny in front of her and ask her to pick it up. You can see everything. I was uh, I was at Hyde last week. Have you been there to Hyde yet? Yeah, I have. Yeah, and I was there. There was twenty people in there. Mike Tyson, Mickey <laughs> Rourke, Lindsay Lohan DJing. It was unbelievable. It was like an autograph show. Yeah, it was. It was like uh, the Beverly Garland autograph show. Uh, Mike was Tyson the ca- was the cast of the Waltons there too? They, they no, they weren't. <laughs> but uh, Mike Tyson, I've seen him out a lot lately. Yeah, Mike what? is. You know, he's another the, Mickey and Mike. Okay, t- two guys. They were so good that who cares? With I mean, people like judge like okay, Mike. He doesn't fight anymore. He's not in his prime anymore. The guy was the greatest of all time. I mean, he's the most exciting. He's not maybe not uh, the greatest boxer of all time, but he's one of the most exciting. Sportsman I've ever seen in my life. He's brilliant. Did you ever see him in uh, Black and White or what's that? They, yeah, the movie, yeah. the James, uh, um, uh, yeah, the James Toback. James Toback. It's like it's it's the best performance I've seen of anybody mm-hmm. in in the past twenty years. He's uh, like the greatest. And Mickey, Mickey's another one. I mean, uh, if you're if you're Mickey for a week in your life, that's it's pretty good. That's good. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, and yeah, and so, um, you know now, okay, they're not exactly who they used to be. But there's someone else. Yeah, you know. But who's, is there another Mike Tyson out there? No. Is there another Mickey Rourke out there? No. 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 Who, Shane West? I mean, who? No. <laughs> who's? No. Who's, and that's the thing with basically with actors today. I mean, it's you're just not getting the same caliber of actors that you got in the 70s, in the 80s. Yeah, all the way up until uh, 2004, Brown Bunny. It was There was a that streak was, going, and then it just uh, came to a grinding halt. After Brown Bunny. Yeah, right that's, after that. That's when it all seemed to... It all went fall down apart. Down. All fell apart. And then uh, and Johnny's film opened. Johnny Depp's film opened yesterday. Biggest single gross it's, in you know, history. Do you know that I did a film with Johnny Depp? I know. Yeah, and you we were, and, and Jerry Lewis. Me, Jerry film. Lewis, Faye Dunaway, Johnny Depp, and uh, Lily Tan at the time. But we were together for several months. Several months. He, he's good. Johnny's good. He's got a good sense of humor. And he couldn't take it here anymore. He left the country. He's, he comes back. He comes back. He, comes he back. bought the whole block. He's, he, I heard he bought like he 15 just bought, houses. He just bought Sunset Plaza? He bought, like, <laughs> he, seriously, like 20 houses. Josh Richmond's happy. You know, yeah, yeah. Not jo- Josh's three friends are like a gross, you know, $200 million a year. When Josh and I used to go to New York, we had a contest of who could collect the most apartment keys. <laughs> and then this guy would, I mean, he was like a, a, a he was like a superintendent instead after a, camp, a week. Yeah, instead of Camp Freddy, you should have him open up Freddy the Freeloader. <laughs> <laughs> he had a dozen keys. <laughs> And hi, I'm talking. He had. Uh, he had. The only thing. Can, can we? Can, can we? People don't know Josh Richmond, but he's a he's a L.A. Uh, legend. A legend. A legend of L.A. Certainly of his own mind. And he uh, he's sort of promotes a lot of clubs and parties in L.A. And he's an interesting guy. Very interesting guy. The only thing is, he's one of those guys that wears a scent. A sort of. Uh, it's not even high karate or Old Spice. It's something weirder. It's like uh, something. But he hugs you because he he does. You know, he's one of the man's man. You know, man man guys they they hug a man i can hug a man because i'm so straight i can you know feel, feel comfortable i can feel comfortable but then he taints you you gotta dry clean you gotta <laughs> you gotta dry clean you gotta get acetone it goes in under your fingernails goes everywhere a beige hue. You might, it's like a you know it's like a skunk sprayed you you gotta bury everything and it's just a hello so every time i see him i tried to i put on a glove i say hello and then i drop the glove on the on the floor wherever i am well, you know, I'm I'm not going to I got I still got to get into parties every now and then, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> so, can we play a song? Can we play a song? This is one of the first uh 
Uh, well, this bands the association, a great uh, sort of uh, band of stars uh, in the 60s. Uh, the song is called The Long... It's like the uh, Camp Freddy of the 60s, along right? Along Comes Mary, and it's, uh, I sense there's references to marijuana, which I'm against. Uh, uh, everyone knows I'm against marijuana. I say lock them all up. Lock them all up for, for lock all possession. The, all the pot smokers? Lock them all up. I'm tired of them spreading. Well, who is it's narcotics. It's a class A narcotic. They just put the fumes in the room, like uh, you go, get you get the contact. Go high. see radio Radiohead, and there's, there's like pot ten everywhere. Th- right, right. Potheads. Who needs that? Lock them up. Johnny Ramone didn't like Lock it. Lock them up. No, good American Johnny Ramone. Lock them up for pot. Yeah, take that pot. It's really no, it's, it's we got really, a, we got a pot smoker on line one. Oh God. Hello. Hey, you know what? Oh, that's not a pot smoker. Rick Rubin, hello. Yeah. He unproduced, um, I'm not that crazy broad that called you guys. Oh, good. Okay, good. Yeah, she's a crazy nut job. And she proves Flash's theory that <laughs> L.A. is, like, obnoxious now. Who she's proves crazy. it? Who proves the theory? <laughs> that bitch that called you guys, that psycho whatever. She was talking about lesbians or gays or, I don't know. She was crazy. I went grocery shopping before she came on the radio, when she was coming on the radio. She was talking about placing, I don't know. Where are you? What, what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm calling What do you got on? Rick Rubin, he, he just produced uh, Stadium Arcadia. Who Business cares what up. Rick Rubin's doing? He's <laughs> washed up. He's washed up. He's a fat he really? pig. He's living in Malibu. Go take a crap, Rick Rubin. <laughs> washed up. Okay. Washed up. All right, let's um, washed let's up. go. Let's go to uh, Billy Morrison here, Camp Freddy Radio. Billy, Billy, um, give that man a job. Listen, <laughs> you, you got to come in every week. I love this. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, what I'm saying here is he's inciting the 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 listeners. I mean, we're really getting yeah, some no, some look, action. Look, Donovan, Donovan. Burning bridges and playing songs like the one you just played, fantastic. Excellent. So we have we have the Billy Morrison thumbs up. Yeah, I love it. Listen, you guys just come in every week. I'll just listen in and have a laugh, and it's, and we're all good. Excellent. How you doing, guys? Good. So Billy, Billy, Where Billy are just, you sound like you're in the subway. He's in Ozfest. <laughs> oh, he's, he's in Ozfest. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm actually uh, I'm just doing a bit of shopping, guys. He flew on the helicopter with uh, with Oz today. Oh, really? Yes. If you see, if, do me a favor. If you see Kelly, Kelly, tell her I lost her number and to call me. I just left her, Vin, but oh. I will tell her. Okay. I will see her. Yeah, she's nice. Uh, it's all going off. There's motorcycles and everything. It's been a fun day. Ozfest is uh, it's about 110 degrees down there. Oof. Oof. It's a hot one, but um, yeah, the only way to travel. How's the girl? How's the girls in his crowd these days? Yeah, well, you see, the point is they're all Midwest American corn-fed girls, which is great if that's what you which is what you're looking for. But you no. know, the skinny, the skinny tattooed rock chick is very thin on the ground at Ozfest. Yeah, that's days. what I like. I, that's exactly yeah. what I like. Skinny you, tattooed rock chick, Deb Foss. There you go. You seen Deb, uh, Oz Deb Foss? Wrong, wrong place to go and look for them, mate. Oh, then then I'm then I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. I'll tell. I'll tell him you're not coming then. I <laughs> know. Uh, I used to. I used to be very close with the the great late uh, Johnny Ramone, and the Ramones had the ugliest girlfriends <laughs> of any band, and I had to see the Ramones, you know, three hundred times. <laughs> I got. I got to tell you that when I joined the cult, they, they warned me about the fans, and it it kind of went over my head until we started playing, you know, Peoria, and I realized that. The cult don't have the best good fans in the world. No, either. no. You know what? I, I like I like girls that if you put on like a hip hop song and they're on the dance floor, suddenly they're dumbfounded, like they don't know what the hell just happened and they have no idea what they're supposed to do. That's don't that's know, the we, kind of girl. Don't I like. We need to we need to have Vincent in a lot. Well, <laughs> I, I think he should take over the morning show. That's yeah. that's my that's my big push right now. Guys, listen, I'm starving. I haven't eaten all day. I just wanted to check in and say sterling job. Thanks, mate. Thank you. All right, and we'll, uh, Dono, I'll see you during the week. All right. All right, bye. All right, we're going to hit a couple of quick commercials, and we'll be right back. Uh, Vincent Gallo, Donovan Leach, how are you? This is Camp Freddy Radio, ND1031. Uh, Vinny, I, I found the, uh, Whew. here we go. Here, I found the, uh, pot, the pot smoker on line one. Oh, God. Here he is. Oh, here they go. Hello. Hey, you're famous, more famous for being famous, Gallo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. All this because I made it with your mother. Is this how you, you turn against me? 
Yeah, you see, you're, you're nothing. You're and let me tell you, let me tell you, your mom is, I mean, a pro. She takes it like a pro, a yeah. real pro, a real pro. Don't and, give me, don't give me, don't give me the pot theory, <laughs> the pot theory, because nobody who's ever done anything good did it on a long-term pot high. Believe me, they faded away quick. Even McCartney, even McCartney, McCartney doesn't, McCartney doesn't smoke pot till 71, where he starts really going at it. And then by 73, he's fried. He's fried by 73. Even John McEnroe, he was a pro, a champ. Somebody hands him a joint, and he's out of tennis in three days. I think he's gone. Speaking of McCartney, you know, because I was just on tour with Sean Lennon, and I'm like, I'm so sick of him. Let's play a McCartney song. Let's play, let's play something just before. Yeah, this would be the last song of the show. Just before he got heavy in the pot. This is his last good moment. It's off the the Ram album. And I want to thank Donovan for having me on the show. If you want to email me, Vincent Gallo at vincentgallo dot com, and uh, buy something from my merch page, and uh, we'll give you a, a five percent rebate, kickback, just like that. And uh, thank you, Vincent, for coming down. This has uh, been Vincent Gallo, the Good American. I think that should be the name of the show, Vincent Gallo, the Good American. I think it would be great. I think uh, Indy needs a little... Phone uh, in, phone uh, in, and, re and demand that I'm on morning radio. A little bee in the bonnet of Indy. A Just little... call the station and demand. Say, we, w we want Vincent Gallo on morning radio. We want to throw off that other act that's not doing so good from what we hear, and we want to replace it with uh, Vinny Gallo. There you go. And uh, and please, listeners... Uh, Isn't it great that Jonesy knew somebody who's in public image? I mean, he's friends with somebody in public image. That's really exciting. That's uh, sort of his claim to fame, other than his gut. Uh, okay, next song is McCartney's Last Moment. It's off the Ram record. It's called Ram On. And uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. <laughs>